Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Sarastro's Descent painting series. In this video, we'll be painting Leoric of the Book from Fantasy Flight Games Descent Journeys in the Dark 2nd Edition. Leoric is the primary magic user of the base set Heroes, and with his haughty expression, arcane book held aloft, and flowing robes, he makes for an interesting and somewhat challenging character to paint. Here's an overview of the steps I'll be using to paint Leoric of the Book. I've chosen to prime Leoric along with all of the other base set heroes with a white primer. We'll then paint on the base colours for all of the main areas of the miniature, but I'll be leaving the yellow trim of the robe until later on. Next, we'll deepen these base colours with some dark washes for the robe, leather and the skin. For the white areas, we'll apply a more delicate build-up using a thinner shade. We'll then carefully highlight the miniature, building up the contrast to create a strong sense of depth. Finally, we'll paint the remaining details, notably the yellow trim. And, just as with Sindrael, I will be rebasing Leoric with a more scenic alternative. Since there's nothing new to add about the preparation stage, let's jump straight in with the base colours. I'm going to begin by giving Leoric's skin a base coat of Cadian flesh tone. I typically thin my paints with a roughly equal amount of water. The only place I'm taking extra care over is the face, as I want to avoid painting over the beard, which wants to remain white. The robes have quite a shifting, ambiguous turquoise colour, and I've chosen to start painting them with a base of Sotek Green. I'm not worried about hitting the yellow parts of the robe, as I'll be painting them much later on. I do, however, want to avoid painting over the white areas, which includes the sleeves and the bottom layer of fabric. For the leather pouches, belts and straps, I'm using some XV88, which has a nice rich orangey tone. I'm now going to clean up the white areas with some Ceramite White. Next, I'm going to darken some Mephiston Red with the addition of a little Caliban Green. I'm then using this to paint the book. I'm also going to paint the runestone held in the left hand. As well as the red gemstones we can see hanging from Leoric's belt. For the pages of the book, I'm mixing some white with some Screaming Skull. Finally, I'm using some Auric Armor Gold for the belt buckles. Thank you. 
Once we're happy with the base colours, we're ready to do some shading. I'm going to begin by using some neat Agrax Earthshade for the leather pouches, straps and belt. I'm also happy for this to cover the golden belt buckles. I'm then going to add an equal quantity of non oil to the Agrax Earthshade. And I'm going to thin this mix with a roughly equal quantity of medium, although you could also use water for this. I'm now using this to shade the pages of the book. This does a nice job of gently articulating the text inscribed within. Once dry, I'm going to apply a couple more layers, focusing more on the central section where the page is attached to the spine of the book. This gives us a simple gradient and a bit of depth, as well as leaving the pages with a pleasingly ancient, weathered look. Now we're going to shade the robes, and for that I'm using an equal mix of Drakenhof Nightshade and Celia Greenshade. Next, we're going to shade the white areas of fabric. White can be a tricky colour to paint, especially when building up highlights in layers. To make life easy, we're going to rely mostly on a gentle build-up of shade instead. To do this, I'm going to use the turquoise mix we used for the robes as a starting point. I'm going to desaturate this by mixing in an equal part of non oil, along with plenty of medium. Water may also be used for this, although medium tends to produce a smoother finish. Our first layer of this can cover all of the white areas. Because it's so thin, it doesn't over darken the white. This approach is a lot easier than building up highlights in layers, and by incorporating the same dark turquoise tones of the robe, we're also mimicking the way that light hitting a coloured surface tends to reflect that colour onto nearby areas. This helps us produce a more natural overall look. Once dry, we can begin adding additional layers, this time focusing just on the areas we want to darken the most. This may include places like the underside of the arms, as well as the parts of the robe that we would expect to be shadowed by the overhanging layers of fabric. If you need help deciding where to place areas of light and shade, there's nothing wrong with referring to reference shots, which you can take with a roughly overhead light source before painting. A link to a full set of such images can be found in the video description below. The thinness of our mix means that each application will only make a subtle difference, but pretty soon the accumulative effect will give us the depth of tone that we're after. We should now have an effective white tone that will need only minimal highlighting later on. To finish the shading off, I'm going to wash the skin using some Reichland Flesh Shade mixed with a little Celia Green Shade in a roughly 2 to 1 ratio. The addition of the green will both darken and cool the tone. Once dry, we're ready to begin adding the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the skin, starting with a reapplication of Cadian Flesh Tone. Naturally, we want to leave the darkest recesses untouched, but clean up the rest in preparation for the subsequent highlights. Thank you. 
I'm now going to add the next lighter highlight with some Kizler flesh, focusing on the more prominent and upturned contours of the face and hands. With larger areas of skin, I might use an intermediate mix before going straight into something as light as Kislev Flesh. But for the small areas we have to work with here, we can get away with slightly more sudden steps up in lightness. A couple of layers will be needed to ensure we've fully maxed out the highlight before we add our final lightest tone. For that, I'm using some Flayed Ones Flesh. We want this to emphasise the forehead, bridge of the nose and the cheekbones. Next we're going to highlight the brown leather, beginning with an equal mix of the original XV88 and some Zamisi Desert. Using a brush with a good point will help make painting such fine details a little easier. I'm then using some pure Zamisi Desert to provide the lightest highlight. It's important not to overload the brush with paint, and I will often unload the brush with a quick wipe on the back of my hand to avoid flooding the area I'm working on. Now we're ready to highlight the robes, and I'm going to begin by using the original Sotec Green to smooth out all of the flat and upturned areas of the fabric. As usual, I'm patiently applying two or three thin layers. I'm stippling the paint on here to preserve the rougher look of the more textured parts of the robes. I'm then going to lighten the Sotec green by mixing in a little Sybarite green, along with a little water to keep the consistency reasonably thin. We can then use this to define the main areas of highlight, keeping the layers nice and thin and building the tone up gently in two or three passes.
We can then add additional Sybarite green in a couple of stages to apply the smaller, brighter highlights. If you end up with any sharp edges between layers, some additional water can be used to thin the paint down to a glaze. This can then be brushed on in a couple of thin layers to smooth the transition out. Here I've built up to a layer of pure Sybarite green. I've chosen to push the highlights a little further by mixing in some white to produce my final and smallest highlight. Next, I'm going to add a few small highlights to the white fabric using some thinned white scar. There isn't much to do here as the shading process has already left us with a pleasing level of contrast. Finally, I'm going to highlight the red gemstones and the spellbook. To do this, I'm using some Evil Sun's Scarlet, once again darkened with a little Caliban green. The resulting hue should be just a shade lighter than the original base colour. This is going to cover most of the runestone. I'm then going to hit each of the tiny gemstones on the belt. We can also paint all of the main flat areas of the book with this. I'm then using some pure Evil Sun Scarlet for my next highlight. This is only going around halfway down the runestone. And I'm only applying this to the edges of the book. Next, I'm going to use some Wild Rider Red. I'm only using this on the gemstones, and I'm significantly reducing the area of highlight. Finally, I'm going to mix in a little white, and provide one small final hit to each stone.
with that done, we're ready to add some finishing touches. We're now going to paint the yellow trim on the robe. For this, I'm going to provide a base colour of Jocayero Orange. I'm going to paint just the two lowest yellow trims initially to model the process. This lower trim is thankfully quite wide and clearly marked in the sculpt. A couple of layers should give us a nice solid base to work on. There is however a much narrower trim on the next layer of cloth that is marked with a thin groove. If this seems a little too tricky to paint neatly, there would be nothing wrong with ignoring it completely. When using one colour for an extended period, it's worth stopping to wash your brush at regular intervals, to prevent the paint from drying in the bristles. As usual, I like to touch up any mistakes as I go along. I'm now going over this with some thinned Avalon Sunset, but I'll be leaving the deepest recessed folds untouched. I'm providing additional layers to the peaks in the fabric to gently build the highlight up, before moving on to the next colour. Next, I'm going to use some Flash Gits Yellow for the brightest parts of the trim. This yellow detailing can be found elsewhere on the miniature, and the same approach can be applied. I've decided to add a little white to the flash gits yellow to pick out the smallest, brightest highlights. Although this is a somewhat fiddly task, the yellow detailing certainly helps the miniature stand out and beautifully captures Leoric's sense of flair and opulence. Next, I'm going to take care of the gold detailing on the book. For that, I'm using the same base and shade combination as we used for the belt buckles, which means providing a base coat of Auric Armor Gold. We can then follow this with an application of Agrax Earthshade. As one optional finishing touch, I'm now going to apply a thin glaze to the shadowed parts of Leoric's skin. 
For this, I'm thinning an equal Celia Green Shade and Drakenhof Nightshade mix with a generous amount of medium. A layer or two applied to the shadows will cool the colour down and help to integrate the skin tone with the rest of the miniature. To complete the face, I'm also going to use a little Celestra Grey to articulate the eyebrows. Finally, I'm going to give the pages of the book a little boost with a Screaming Skull and White mix, taking care to avoid the writing. With the painting complete, we can now protect the miniature with some matte varnish. I would then apply some gloss varnish to the gemstones, which I would usually thin with an equal amount of water. Finally, I'm going to rebase Leoric using the same method described in episode 1. Some additional non-oil may be added to the base to build up a little shadow. And this completes Leoric of the book. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can also support my work by clicking the Patreon link above. My sincere thanks go out to the existing patrons who are financing the equipment and the hours needed to produce these videos. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Descent Journeys in the Dark. Happy painting!